Oh, inertia. You're gonna make me work, huh? Inertia, let go of those keys. You're not old enough to drive yet. I'm Zach George. I train dogs, and this is my new dog, Inertia. I'm taking you along as I train her from day one. You can start from the beginning or pick up anywhere and start learning. Welcome to the dog training experience. Today, we'll attempt to begin getting Inertia's insane puppy biting under control. Focus on crate training, come, some tricks, and more. Let's definitely start with puppy biting, though. In the early days of training your dog, it's important to try a variety of treats to find out what your dog likes. And it's also important to have treats available at all times. She was chewing my shoelace. She stopped chewing my shoelace, looked at me. I'm gonna give her a reward for that. Two really great and different treat options that dogs love that I work with are these Pupford freeze-dried beef liver treats and these freeze-dried sweet potato treats. She loves those sweet potato treats. These are great because they're freeze-dried. They keep well at room temperature, so they have the flavor and the nutrients, and they don't have a bunch of crazy ingredients in them. So 100% sweet potato, 95% beef liver. The other 5% is pea protein to hold it all together. Inertia, you 100% have to stop chewing on my shoelaces. You can get these puffer treats right now at the link in the description. So you might notice that Inertia has a particular fascination with shoelaces, pants legs. She is really really enjoying chewing on these. I think we should work on teaching her that this is inappropriate behavior. Oh, inertia. You're gonna make me work, huh? There's a couple of ways to handle this. Number one, ideally you want to encourage your dog to sit and stay and be nice and calm before they even think about going for someone's pant leg or shoelaces. With an eight week old puppy, you're still building communication, so you can't perfect this quick. This is gonna take some time. I think protocol here is to get a nurse's attention off of this and onto something that I'd rather she do. Maybe sit or lie down or maybe even do some trick training. All she's really saying when she does this is, hey, I wanna play, I wanna do something, this is fun. So let's give her something else to do. What I'm gonna do is first get her attention off of my leg. Good job. I'm gonna ask for a sit before giving her the treat. Good. Remember the click just means good dog. I like that. You win something. To be clear, I'm rewarding the sit, not the biting on the pants. What I like to do when a dog is that interested in engaging with me is jump into some training like this. We're working on sit and down right now, and we've decided that we're gonna try calling up sit now. Boy, she got wild just as you started filming here. Ow, oh my gosh, yep, my arms. That bite's getting stronger by the day here. Sit, good, down, good, okay, good. And the okay is just to let her know that the down is over in that case. Down. We're gonna continue working on those drills until they're second nature to her. So I'm gonna give her a break right now. She's getting a little bit frustrated as is very normal for a young dog. And it's important not to push them through frustration too much, not at this age anyway. And it's really on us to keep things really fun for them. If they're not having fun, it's really gonna hinder your progress. So better to take a break now than to keep pressing the point. By the way, I cover issues like this and more in both of my books. I'll have links to those in the description below. You might recall in a past episode, we were working on rollover, play dead. And ideally in a perfect world, what I'm trying to get is having her put her legs straight up in the air like a cockroach. But we're still a ways away from that. Going for completely still. Do you know what completely still means? I'm clicking one after the other here to really encourage duration. In other words, her really holding that position. Play dead. Good. Okay, get up. And I wanna let her know that the play dead is over so she's very clear on when she can get up in the future because dramatic long play deads can be fun. Play dead, oh yes. See how I'm ignoring the biting? That can be very frustrating. I'm just ignoring it and getting her back onto the training session here, letting her know what will work. Yes, I don't know if you could catch that. I mean, it was as though she was like, what do I have to do? That thing I was just doing a second ago? At which time I was like, yeah, that's what you need to do. That's what's gonna get you what you want. Even though inertia is only eight weeks old, I think it's a good idea to start working on teaching her how to be polite when she gets pet. I've got an opportunity here with our associate producer and we're gonna work on some training. Gonna invite inertia over here. Be excited, make it tempting for her. I wanna see if she'll jump. I mean, let's see how, what her default is. So maybe even stand up. So if you stand up and you go to pet her, all right, stop petting her, and now start petting her again really excitedly. I just, okay, so, you know, this isn't very polite. She's chewing on your shoe. Let's see if she wants that. I'm just gonna try to redirect her for a second there. All right, go ahead and pet her now. I'm just gonna stay on her. Good job. I like that she's holding her sit. That's good. I saw her going. <laughs> Funny how 
Because right now she's a little too persistent on the shoes. Go ahead and take a step back right now, please. Thanks. Since we're still in the communication building phase for at least the next couple of months, management is extra important. So having a puppy on leash until sufficient communication is built is a practical way to manage your dog's unwanted behaviors. Good job right here. She's offering a down, so I'm just gonna go ahead and treat her. Good, and after you get done tying your shoes, just come and pet her. If she starts to go for your shoes, just back away. Here I'm just rewarding her for holding this calm position. Oh, now back away. Yep, thank you, appreciate that. Now you would also have the option to back your dog away as well, but I know that she knows what I want done here after editing enough of these videos, yeah. right? Good job. Yes, good, now maybe two strokes. Perfect, good, and so we're not getting any shoe biting here or jumping, much more polite behavior. So pretty good for a first session, I'd say. It should be noted that an eight-week-old puppy needs lots of socialization with people, so don't be too strict about good manners in this situation. I'm more or less just planting the seed for future training, but for the time being, I'm going to be relatively permissive about jumping as I want inertia to love people. Having your dog come to you is an essential skill, so always be very stern and use a serious, deep tone of voice. Okay, just yes. kidding. The goofier you act and the higher pitched your voice is, the better. I wanted to play the come win call game, you know, where you throw a treat and they have to come back to you because very often when you're working with a puppy, they're just stuck to you or they're tuned out doing something else. I just want to start teaching her this whole concept of coming to me when I call her. Come here. Inertia, come. Good job. And I'm just gonna either say inertia, inertia, come. I wanted to know what both of them mean. I'm not too worried about confusing her. Inertia, come on. Yes, good. That was a good example of resisting the urge to say, come, 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 and waiting it out a little bit there. Remember, if you're repeating, come, 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 over and over, and your dog is ignoring you, well, you're conditioning them to ignore you. Instead, make sounds or happy movements that make you more enticing to your dog. Okay, now she's getting away from me here. I'm gonna give it time. I just want to see if she comes back looking for more food. Maybe she's full, maybe she's done with it, maybe the food's not reinforcing enough anymore. I don't know. That's what I'm trying to discover. <laughs> ah! Time for a potty break. There you go. She's not facing north for the record. Is it magnetic north? Good job, girl. Go poop. Nice job, well that's a lot of poop. Inertia is doing so well with tracking toys and playing, so I thought it would be a good idea to start her modeling career. Being that she's going to be an Instagram and YouTube superstar, I wanna make sure that I can teach her how to look at a camera when we take a picture. I'm gonna make it like a toy here and just encourage her to look in the direction of it. What's this? Yes, good job. And I'm saying, what's this? I don't know, it feels natural to me. We can modify that later. What's this? Yes. Most dogs who are curious are gonna naturally look at something. Just focus on making this an object. Forget that you think of it as a phone, something that you hold real still. Just get your dog interested in looking at it at first after you've encouraged calm behavior. What's this? Oh good, I got her looking at it while doing a trick. I love that. So we still have a ways to go on this, but I think we're off to a good start. Stay tuned to see if we make progress. Looks like she wants to play. I'm all about it. Play break. Training a dog though isn't always about come, stay, sit, down, all that good stuff. A lot of times it's just letting them do their own thing and letting them discover stuff on their own. Free play is essential. In fact, that's what most of your training really should be when you have a puppy. Here we have a bunch of toys. We got a ball, a bed that she's loving engaging with. I don't have the bed in her crate because I know she's gonna chew it up or start biting on it. And I don't want that habit to get started. So we have some towels in there instead, which are a little less biteable, not quite as tempting to bite. Of course, at this age, they just bite everything. Why would you want to bite marble? So now I'm going to try to redirect her attention off of that marble and onto this ball and see if I can get her playing just to show her the appropriate kind of play that is acceptable. Hey. What's going on in there, Shell? What is that? I know you like that bed. She's looking, she's thinking, and she wants marble instead. Okay, let's try it again. Maybe I'll try a different toy this time, this crinkly one. That one worked. 
Yes. If you have a puppy and you're trying to discourage them from biting on every little thing, the natural thing to do is say no, no, and correct them and just pick them up or pull them away constantly, but they're not gonna learn very effectively like that. So really taking the time to get them to voluntarily go through the motions of stopping on their own without being pulled is what's really gonna teach stuff like this. That's what's really gonna get your dog to stop chewing, biting, jumping, all of those basic unwanted behaviors. If she wants to just lay down and chill out, that's fine with me too. That is a valuable skill, so I will periodically click and treat that behavior when she's in a mellow state like that as well. Crate training can be a very delicate process and I'm still trying to create a positive association with her crate over the next few days. Today I'm working on teaching inertia how to get comfortable going into her crate, I'm trying to encourage her to go into the crate. So I'm gonna to toss a treat here as soon as she gives me her attention. The key with crate training is to get your dog willingly and voluntarily going into their crate. So use treats they love and take it slow. treat right there. I'm gonna continue to click her for hanging out in here for duration, just to keep her in there voluntarily. I'm not gonna shut the door. I want her to know that being in here is a great thing. These are crumb sized treats here. And since I'm using such small treats that she likes, I'm able to really give her tons and tons of treats here without fear of her getting overweight. So basically step one is getting her to go into the crate voluntarily. And step two is encouraging her to relax in the crate. Ultimately what I'm going for is a settle. Look, she just came out of the crate there. Hey, what's this? What's this? Right here, inertia, come. Good, see how I wasn't saying inertia, come, inertia, come. She's not supposed to be off leash right now. We were just gonna change her collar out, but anyway, it's the position I find myself in. She's starting to respond to hand signals here just by me putting my hand out here. Good job, you're awesome, girl. Ooh, I like that. That's more calm behavior right there. Really capturing that is important. This is what the experience is really like here. It's lots of repetition. It looks like she needs a little help because she's not quite going into the down on her own, but I'm gonna just lure her right there. Good job. Now I definitely wanna jackpot this. I wanna keep the treats coming right now to let her know, whoa, and when you're in a down, you really get the treats. Now, if your dog were struggling to go into a down like this, they're not yet ready for this. You'd want to prioritize teaching them how to lie down with a lure. I'm gonna actually try something. I'm gonna try backing away just a little bit so she gets used to seeing me from farther away because puppies like to be near you as a general rule. Yeah, well, I like that look. That looks calm. Yes, settle. Now she's gonna come out. I'm not gonna reward you. I'm gonna let her know that doesn't work for her if she wants more treats. Nersha, come. I am gonna reward her there for coming to me. Being a good teacher requires you to be flexible and willing to alter your lesson plan. In this case, sure, I'd rather her go into her crate, but I also want her to know that coming to me is something I strongly value. Look, she's thinking about going in there. One step in there. Yes, good. I'm gonna jackpot her, give her a bunch of little rewards here. I'm gonna one after the other. Click, treat, click, treat. Click, treat. Put me into a down. Down. And I'm not worried about getting the door shut right now. I'm taking my sweet time. I really want her to like the crate. Even though I go through these efforts to try to make sure that she likes the crate, that's still no guarantee that she'll take to the crate. Some dogs will never take to a crate. Cousin Samantha stopped over to see Inertia. Never miss an opportunity to give your dog great experiences with people when they're young. Here you go. You can have her, she's yours, bye. <laughs> what people say after five days of having a puppy. I'm gonna give her a break for a bit and resume training at her next meal. It's lunchtime for inertia and I'm gonna use some of her food here to do some more training. There we go. And again, and here I can really afford to give her lots of treats because it's her food. Now you can get away with using kibble and clicker training really early on. In general, you don't really wanna use such a low value reward. There's money everywhere. I've done it now, haven't I? Okay, here we go. Let's try that again. Waiting for her to get all four of those in. I'm gonna be patient here and see if she does it before I click her again. Yes, good job. See if she lies down. I'm gonna give it one sec. Okay, yep, that's what I thought. Good job, very good inertia. Settle. Notice I'm not saying down, I'm saying settle in this case because it's more the relaxed, calm state of mind that I'm trying to train rather than a physical position. Just because something looks the same doesn't make it entirely the same. Settle, very good. And this is just after her nap. 
So encouraging her to be calm after her nap is good. She tends to get a lot of energy. Because in general, when I'm not working with her or playing with her, I want her to be in a calm state of mind. Settle. Very good. Good eye contact right there. I'm going to click that eye contact. Love how she's got her head down. This is a good way to feed your dog if they're receptive to it. Now that we're getting into a really good rhythm, I think I'm gonna slow down the pace with which I reward. Remember, that's the rate of reinforcement because she's demonstrating stability here. I'm definitely seeing progress, so that's good. Yes, good job. Settle, do you see that? Was that good or what? Our friend Tom is coming over. Now he's a super tall man. That can throw some dogs off. Let's see how inertia does. There you go, and just let her check you out. No sudden movements, but maybe pet her softly. There you go, perfect. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, good body language here. Since inertia sometimes is a little standoffish with new people, Tom is willing to be a volunteer here. If she wants to jump on him and be crazy, I'm actually okay with that because that indicates comfort. We can always work on sit, stay later. That's quite polite. I'm gonna have you give her some hot dog. Just give her like break off little tiny bits at a time. Again. Oh, see, that's interesting. And she's going through the fear period right now. Eight weeks is where they start to become a little apprehensive of new things. So I'm gonna come over here and try and reassure her. Hey. She's like, how does he have that? Only my dad has that. Yeah, forget about the hot dogs. Do this with it, like back and forth. See if she, if she takes to that. Maybe toss it. Yeah, there you go. She's lighting up. Cool. See those bags over there? Yeah, see, she wants to light up for them. You see her ears go back and start yeah. wagging her tail. She's being playful intermittently, but now she's looking at these bags and she's like, I don't know. So I'm gonna let her back away from that. That's fine. See, she was scared of the bag and now she's not. Just give your dog a little bit of time to adjust to something new especially when they're young like this. Let's see what happens if you hold her. If she freaks out, just put her down, but if she's calm, pet her softly. Girl. If she licks you, that'd be good. Oh, what a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone loves puppy kisses. Appreciate it. This is real valuable time to socialize her. We came outside, did a little bit of playing. Seems to put her at ease a little bit. It's windy, just a short toss. Yeah, nice and low, that's it. Perfect. Nice. Good focus though. I like that she's not giving up on it. While Inertia was initially cautious of Tom, we eventually got them playing a little. That's a success. Later that day, we had our friend and vet, Dr. Abby, come over. She's only eight weeks. It's more important right now that she get experience with people and get to know how this world works. Her biting is getting a little more intense today than it has the last few days. Good luck with that. Let me know if you figure that one out. There's still so much to do over the next year of training. If you're looking for a condensed, free 30-day digital dog training course, check out my 30-day perfect pup program, which will give you a crash course in training your dog. My books are also a great resource. Be sure to get lots of great treats and other products from Pupford to keep your training moving forward. I'll have a link below. I'm covering lots of inertia's training on Instagram too. Keep up with her progress over there. Click subscribe and the bell notification so that you'll be notified every time we upload a new episode. In our next episode, episode, I'll begin introducing our older, sometimes reactive dog, Indy, to inertia. We'll take inertia to the vet, continue working on crate training and see if we can improve there, and we'll continue to address inertia's insane puppy biting. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.